Hi, I'm Mark Claghorn, the training director for the Photographer Academy. And today I'm talking about my three portrait lenses. In fact, it's gonna be three plus one, just to give you the heads up. And I thought you can see what the lenses are gonna be straight away, 50, 85, 70, 200. However, um, I, I really wanna kind of discuss uh, about what lenses to buy and in what level you are as a photographer and so on because I think we can waste a lot of money on kit at times and never really maximize what we're actually using so uh, in this film uh, we're just going to basically explore in plus we're going to see some images and, and kind of going to try and get across um, how a portrait shoot uh, can really benefit from a variety of lenses to match a style that you want and so on with it. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, my, my three kind of go-to portrait len lenses are as seen. 50mm just gives me a little bit more of a wider angle uh, kind of um, por a portrait, so I can see a little bit more of the background or I can use a little bit more of a perspective shift as far as the customer is concerned. Um, but kind of just giving that little bit more of a, a, a kind of what we call a, a prime 50 mil kind of almost that standard lens that used to be come as a standard kit lens years ago um, but for me I, I still have never fallen out of love with it and it's always been uh, one of my main things is a, a kind of a standard lens 85 tends to be my portrait lens so uh, more often than not it's just used for headshots head and shoulders shoulder kind of element and when we see the kind of the being used on location in the park uh, you'll see it pretty much kind of stays under that umbrella but I if I didn't take my 50 mil lens or I dropped it um, and I needed to actually just work with either the 85 mil or the zoom um, I, I've got no problem with that and things really so you know it's it always is boiling back down to can you be bothered to change a lens that's so many photographers opt for the zoom lens because they just want to actually save themselves a little bit of hassle um, i agree if you're working in a dirty location a dusty location a sand kind of location you might not want to change lenses uh, but i get that but i'm always trying to actually use the right lens for the job as such so, um, as I mentioned, you know, the 50mm lens prime is that standard kit lens uh, that pretty much it's going to be on the front of my camera all of the time, no matter what. It's the standard one I take out on the streets. It's a standard one I carry on holiday. It's the standard one that is on the front of the lens whenever I'm working on location straight away. I would say that if you're... Um, have problems with weight on a camera no matter what camera manufacturer you 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 kind of shoot shoot with look i'm i'm a canon shooter at present um but through my career i've obviously shot um olympus pentax uh nikon mamiya hasselblad sinar it's always been the kind of the pro uh, the progression but when you invest into the camera body and you're making yourself kind of more dominant with a manufacturer, you've settled there, then, then basically you're going to be investing into glass. Uh, a, I would say that a body is pretty much disposable because it's going to change and upgrade, whereas a lens is a kind of a forever lens, uh, and your glass is something that you invest into. However, glass is so expensive, uh, a simple comparisons what on screen now you know you've got the more pro lens in canon 50 mil 1.2 usm um, and basically you've got a f 1.4 on the right hand side and it's a thousand pound less so obviously when you're just getting start uh, started within photography or if you use your kit really hard and possibly you know you you don't really respect it and you can't afford to replace it all the time then um, obviously you're going to be going for a little bit more of a disposable lens but the 50 mil ef lens um, the one on the right hand side the word uh, the 1.4 is still i promise you a really great lens to actually be using all the time but the pro lenses they just have a f a, a slightly kind of faster focus um point um, I, I know we kind of look at the lens and we often talk about a faster lens um, but in fact usually we're talking the faster lens is because it has a wider ap aperture 
Um, so in other words, we're seeing the 1.2 compared to the 1.4. So we would say that the lens on the left, the 1.2, is a faster lens than the one on the right. However, when you're looking at the kind of more pro lens on the left compared to the uh, more kind of um, general lens on the right, um, they, they definitely snap focus in a different way. So the quality of the glass really does make a difference with it. So when you can afford and when you want to invest into your forever lens, then you make that decision. But don't be afraid of third party in the uh, initial stay, uh, stay stages in kind of uh, really going through your kind of how to use and do you really want that lens and so on with it. It's, it's so difficult in the world of photography. It's not like a paintbrush where you can kind of buy a paintbrush for a tenner and if you don't enjoy it, you throw it away and you buy one for 20 quid or fiver or a pound you know whatever whatever it be when we're investing into photography um especially when you're looking at the very very expensive lenses some of the very big expensive zooms and primes then i would probably suggest that you rent one in a short term to kind of get used to it and just see if you really do feel it makes a difference to your photography you know we all like to buy new toys and um we just got to find what is the right balance. And even if you're a keen photographer, you might have the budget more than some pro photographers. So you might be investing into the top of the range of everything. But, but the reality is that are you using it? as a, a glass forever lens and things really but if you've got the budget i would always go for the pro lens over the kind of the more kit lenses and things really and, and there are even cheaper lenses than the fifth uh, the 50 mil that you're seeing on screen now where you can pick it up for about 50 quid so you know there is a huge change but the 50 mil for me just gives me that real uh, kind of more scene as well as the person in my portrait my other main lens would be my headshot lens, which is my 85mm lens. And um, that lens uh, pretty much um, would do all of my boudoir photography, all of my portrait photography, whether in studio, in studio on location. It would pretty much feature as the main headshot lens in everything that I do. And um, its its focal length... It, it's more complementary to the actual physicality of the person whereas a 50 mil lens will add let's say a little bit of weight if we're too close to a subject because of the perspective belly um, whereas the 85 mil lens is more of a portrait lens uh, 85 and beyond really uh, is is looking at that kind of fixed prime and it gives a different quality to the bokeh as far as the background so if i was using a 70 to 200 lens and i put this 70 to 200 at an 85 focal length it's going to give me a good result but it's not going to give me the same result um even by filling the frame um as we would do with a, a prime 85 so i always talk about zooming with the feet before zooming with a lens so in other words use the lens whatever you have at its maximum fo uh, focal length if possible and then use your feet to actually um, change what is in the picture uh, before you actually just zoom out for the sake of it now there's different scenarios like wedding photography wildlife photography sport photography and so on i get all that but we're on about portrait photography today so an 85 mil if you're looking to spoil yourself i i, I would basically uh, really think long and hard of a 85 and a 50 mil before perhaps going for the zoom lens as your main option the 7200 lens, this is where I will encourage you before anything else to jump straight in and spend as much money as you can on the likes of your 7200. Buy the newest one you can physically afford. Um, why? Because it really does make a, diff a difference. The new technology, the speed of the lens as far as how fast it is to uh, fo uh, focus is absolutely key. And you're going to probably find that a 7200 lens, usually the pro end, is going to be a an f2.8. Now you can see that you've got a lens on the right hand side, which again is a thousand pound less, and that is um, an f4 lens. Um, but what you've got to be careful 
depends on your manufacturer, of course. What what you've got to be careful of is that when you're buying um, an f4 lens or a 5.6 lens, it, it doesn't have a floating aperture. What do I mean by that? Some lenses, uh, specifically some of the very big zooms, um, when it says f5.6 to f7 point whatever yeah it really means that as you zoom in and out the aperture will um, have to change because of the way that the lens is configured whereas if you're buying the likes of the 7200 on the left hand side here and it says 2 is 2.8 that lens is going to deliver a 2.8 aperture all the time if that's what you decide to do in the same way it would uh, uh, produce an f4 um, if its minimum aperture was f4 and so on or whatever you choose okay but you've just got to watch when you're buying the zoom lens that it, it is a a kind of a, a fixed aperture zoom and it's not going to float as you zoom in and out and things really but really uh, if you're making that big commitment into a forever glass uh, I suppose the majority of us would opt for a 7200 lens straight away. However, they're a hell of a weight, so be careful if you're using it on location and you're handheld for a long day. It can really take the toil on you and things, really. But my kind of forever lens would be a 7200 lens without any trouble at all uh, in recommendation on that with it. But I do have a secret we weapon. Um, when I moved over to Canon, um, I kind of moved from Nikon because they said at the time they weren't going to develop another full-frame camera in digital. It's a long time ago now, right? Um, but um, Canon had already committed to it, and they already had a better ISO and a better kind of physical quality of image at the time, thanks to the 5D. Um, and they also kind of had this lens which I'd never seen before really that came a part of the kind of the the kit that you bought the 5D with which is this 24 to 105 lens and this 24 to 105 lens became pretty much a secret weapon in studio uh, on location uh, as well as uh, on on weddings as well with it and things really and uh, even though it was an f4 lens um, and you know they do a 24 to 70 which was a 2.8 lens so a faster lens um, the 24 to 70 had a bit of a, a kind of a, a magnification problem at the 70 it wasn't giving me my portrait end so if you know by now I like an A85 and beyond for my portraits, a 24 to 70 doesn't fulfill that. It is still kind of closer to the 50 mil than it is the 85, as it were. So the 24 105, now I could actually have a zoom lens that I could pretty much use at 105 the majority of the time. So almost in that realm of a perfect portrait lens. Um, to give me the kind of the quality that I need in, in an everyday situation, especially in studio with families, uh, that 24 to 105 was my pretty much a go-to lens in studio for the first 20 minutes of the shoot where I'm looking to get that variety and things really. So as I said, e even though the three favorite lenses, uh, I've discussed the 50, 85 and the 70, 200 with it, this 24 to 105 really, really, really did make a big difference to um, the workflow of the shoot and things really, the flow of the shoot. But I still, in a studio and on location, and if you ever watched any of the films on the Academy where I'm shooting live and I'm explaining to you, you'll see that I'm swapping lenses specifically between a 50 and 80, 85 mil a lot in studio. Um, I very rarely revert to a 70 or 200 lens in studio because of its physicality and its length and things really. So let's have a look at some images and see how the different lenses perform um, over one shoot. So to start with, um, these are all four of those lenses in use. Um, they're being shot um, of a teen girl par a party on location as such. Um, pretty much the birthday girl is the girl on the left hand side and featured in the um, overhead shot on the right hand side as well and these are a couple of her friends with her we'll, we'll, we'll see more of the shoot now in a minute uh, I thought this was a perfect example to kind of demonstrate the, the changing of the lens um, obviously you might be using a different lens on a different body I find it easier to swap a lens than just to actually swap a body but that's down to you and how you work so as I mentioned the 50mm prime lens on the left hand side just gives me 
that little bit more um, uh, around the subject. And it also gives me, when I'm shooting at the likes of f2.8, f2 I, I don't usually go below 2.8 um, as a rule um, because I tend to actually have more out-of-focus images than sharp then. Um, I always focus in on the eye, so that is really what I'm kind of, uh, my focus uh, spot is doing. Um, but as you can see on the left, uh, the left-hand side where I want that extra little bit of space around the image, the 50 is doing that job without any trouble at all within things. And uh, as I said, we'll, we'll look at some of these images now in a minute. But when we start to kind of look in within the photograph, we have this lovely sharp eye, but we have a good out of focus bokeh background all the um, almost especially when you're using the likes of f2.8 whereas a medium lens a uh, zoom lens at the 50 mil even if i could get 2.8 with it there would be more of that background looking sharper as such 85 mil my favorite as i was saying to you uh, again gives me kind of good sharpness around the image and things it's my headshot image um, whether i'm deciding to crop um uh, through the head or not uh, that's the kind of the, the the exaggerated crop if I was looking for a headshot image obviously I would have the full head and I would be shooting uh, just through the bust and always above the nipple whether it's man or woman um, and that and that would be the the kind of the basics of the cropping but I do like this slightly closer in element that it allows me to actually shoot with as well um, so I can move in and out obviously there is a point where you can only get so so close before the lens can't focus in as close as a macro lens would do and so on with it but uh, what I love here is you you can see at the 2.8 is that the background, um, the grass behind, is being thrown fully out of, fo of focus with it. So the attraction of the image, uh, we, we can't help but look at her, look at the eyes. Uh, we're not getting distracted by anything else in the background as such, really. So that's a classic use of my 85mm lens. The next image of the, the girl here is a 7200, um, but in this case, it's not being used as a full... Um, 200 mil of the image but you can see here that when I'm shooting at 2.8 again it basically throws the background out quite a lot very very similar to the likes of the 50 mil lens when I'm using the uh, the zoom at beyond a, a kind of a basic focal length of 50 and so on with it so obviously it naturally starts at 70 mil so I'm already going to be looking more towards um, getting closer to a telephoto lens uh, which is perfect for portraiture rather than actually a wider angle kind of lens so this this would be a, a good um, exam example or bad example whatever you want to use as uh, of using the 7200 the 70, uh, 70, lens but still getting that uh, drop focus uh, bokeh kind of um, uh, distraction out of the way kind of thing because there's cars in the background here there's a road and everything else um, and we've kind of got rid of it and then the image on the right hand side that's my 24 to 105 lens and that would be a perfect example of how I use it um, I use it a lot on location like you see in here especially when I'm down on the beach as well um, if it's a, no a noisy location where I need to be closer to the subject instead of the likes of the 7200 lens and being at the full 200 um, but when I'm using the 24 to 105 I'm tending to use the lens at the 24 or I'm using it at the 105 very rare uh, rarely do I use it between unless I'm in a lazy mode so when I'm shooting boudoir um, photographs from above and their client is on the bed or on the quilt or wherever it would be, then the 24 kind of from above is a perfect example, very similar to what we're seeing with the actual uh, grassland that we're in here and things. And then when I'm photographing at the 105, I could pretty much get a pin sharp image like the effect of the 85 mil lens here, um, but it is an F4 lens. So all I really do is lose a stop of light so I tend to, when I um, change my, um, uh, from a say an 85mm lens where I'm working at f2.8 and I just swap straight away to a 24-105 to lens 
as I change the lens, I also just up the ISO by one stop. So I usually work on say 100 ISO if uh, when I was working on an 85 mil prime in, in a kind of a good well lit area. When I swap it to the 24 to 105, I just pop my ISO up to 200 ISO to give me back that stop of light that I've lost because of the aperture and things really. So with that in mind, if we were to kind of look at the different images, um, these are a kind of a spread, and this is a real shoot as well, okay? But this is a spread of images where you can see the 50 mil lens being used, um, how it kind of works there, um, all being shot of, of two of 2.8. Um, even though they're a raw file, they've actually had their post-production work uh, done on them. So you can see there's more generality, there's more space, there's a little bit of breathing room there. Whereas when I move to the likes of the 85mm lens, um, it's usually going to be used in this way, but you can also see I still got the ability to basically step away, zoom with my feet, but when I zoom with my feet, I start to actually bring more elements within the photograph. But even with an 85mm lens at 2.8, you can see that the background is being dropped out of focus straight away, but anything that is close to the girl's head here is getting closer to being in focus as such, yep, as you can see or at least appears that it's more in focus. Then we look at the 70 to 200 mil, and we can see, you know, a lot more images, and you can see how this is a perfect kind of example of if that was the only lens you had, then don't be afraid of using the one lens. Um, but again, it's about controlling that light. By, uh, by the way, I should say that every lens that I use, I don't have a filter on the front. Um, because I don't like um, to degrade the lens by the likes of light spilling onto a piece of glass in front of the glass, as it were. And I always use a lens hood, um, a minimum of a lens hood that comes with the lens or buy a lens hood to go with the lens to help uh, stop any of the light contaminating the glass of the lens itself. And then obviously if I'm shooting into the light or the sun is behind them coming towards me, which more often than not it is, I'll use my hand um, to actually shield the lens a little bit more and things really. So when we're looking here, for instance, and we're looking at the um, how the lens is being used. In, in this case, even though it's um, a 7200 lens with this image, um, it's at 180. Uh, it's showing me the focal length on the side. This image here is 135. This image is 180. This image is at the 200. This image is at the 200 again. This image is at the 145 and now at 170 and at the 150. So you can see that zoom lens is being used uh, a lot more kind of fo focal length zooming in and out and everything else. The benefit of the prime lens, of course, if we're looking for a stylization that will maintain itself with drop focus in the background, a prime lens will do that for you compared to a zoom lens. As, as you've seen, I'm kind of zooming in and out. And where, whereas if we kind of look at this image where it's at the 145, you can see there's color of the cars in the background. You can make out the road and so on. If I was using that lens at the, uh, the, the, the full 200 and I zoomed with my feet, in other words, I walked backwards a little bit, um, that background would be pretty much gone. Uh, and so it's the laziness of the zoom at times that we've just got to really be aware of. So my, uh, my favourite three lenses for portrait photography are 50mm, 85 70 200 and the secret weapon is the kit, uh, the kit lens at the 24-105. to